Today on episode number 853 of the School of Podcasting, look, it's towards the end of the year, and so there are some housekeeping things that we need to get in line so we understand how to transition in next year. And I have kind of a two sides of a story here. We're going to talk about a pretty interesting tool that uses artificial intelligence, better known as AI. And then I'm going to explain how I kind of am not a fan of AI because of what it did to me as a child. And more importantly, please don't turn podcasting into up with people. Hit it, ladies. The School of Podcasting with Dave Jackson. Podcasting since 2005, I am your award-winning Hall of Fame podcast coach, Dave Jackson, thanking you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the show, this is where I help you plan, launch, and grow your podcast. My website is schoolofpodcasting.com. Because you're listening to me right now, if you go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash listener, that will save you on either a monthly or yearly subscription. And of course, that comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And we have some interesting things on the show today. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence. It's often called AI. I was at the grocery store today, and I swear it was like, look, Frosted Flakes with Tony the Tiger, now with AI. It's like everything has artificial intelligence, and I kind of have a slight bias against it. But I also found a tool that uses it that I was like, hmm. So you're going to hear me kind of go a little split personality today. But I do want to start off with some uh, housekeeping things, things that we need to know. And the first one is I always like to talk about because of my podcast. And, you know, if you have one of these, go out to schoolofpodcasting.com slash because and just let me know what happened that wouldn't have happened except, well, you have a podcast. And I always ask when a a member joins the School of Podcasting, I always ask, hey, how did you find me? Because I want to do more of that. So here's a fun little round circle. You ready for this? I Because of my podcast, I got a book deal with Skyhorse Publishing, which allowed me to publish a, my first published book. I've published other ones on my own. This was the one that I worked with a publisher. It's called Profit From Your Podcast. You can find it at ProfitFromYourPodcast.com. And I did not know that apparently if you go into a FedEx store, there's a chance you're going to find Profit From Your Podcast on a shelf. And the new member of the School of Podcasting found it, picked it up, bought it, read it, tracked me down on the internet, listened to the show, and then became a member of the School of Podcasting. So you always want to ask people, hey, how did you find me? Because I'm now asking you, hey, why don't you go to the FedEx store and uh, buy that book and become a member of the School of Podcasting? Or you can just go to ProfitFromYourPodcast.com. But that was one that I've like, I've never heard that before. I've heard, I read your newsletter, I saw you at a conference, et cetera. It's the first one where I'm like, oh, I discovered you at the FedEx store. I was like, wow, well, there is a different one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. if you are one of those people, do you remember like back in October when I said, if you want to launch a show in 2023, like in January, you should do it then. Well, here's why. Apple has announced their holiday hours from November 19th, 2022 through November 27th, along with December 23rd through January 2nd. New shows and channels and or subscriptions submitting during those windows to Apple may not, which in reality means is not, going to be available within our regular time. And just to clarify, this is submitting a brand new show to be included in the directory, not creating a new episode. If you're already in Apple, you're fine. So if you're like, oh, I need this by next Monday, Mm, not if you're submitting it during those dates. And also responses to any kind of tickets that you submit are also going to be delayed. Now, can we just say what that means in English? Nobody's going to be home. It's the holidays. Now, I realize that you are like, yeah, I'm home with my family and I have all this extra time. And that's why I'm trying to take this time to launch my podcast. That doesn't really work well unless you have somebody 
that is showing you the right way to do this. But even if you do it the right way and you've got your first episode and it sounds great and you've had people listen to it and give you honest feedback, you're like, great, I'm ready to go. And you look up and it's November 20th. Yeah, this, this, but here's, here's the thing. What does this mean, Dave? Am I doomed? No, it means the world has waited 18 years for your podcast. It can wait another week. So keep that in mind. It's not the end of the world. I know. Look, I know. We all have expectations. And I really wanted it to come out on this date. And now it's not. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's okay. So if you, uh, according to Rob Walsh over at thefeed.libson.com, uh, he said that if you want to have a full launch on January 1st, you should submit by November 15th, which as I record this now, by the time you get this is tomorrow. And realize you could submit something that just says, hey, a new show is coming January 1st. Check back. And that could be your podcast. So I wanted to do that. The other thing I want to remind you is I don't care if it's your media host, because in full disclosure, if you're new to the show, I work for Libsyn, but this is a show from the School of Podcasting. But this could be your media host. It could be your email provider. It could be whoever. Whatever service you're using, realize It's November, December, and around those time frames, people are going to be home with their families, and that's a good thing. So plan accordingly so that you can also be with your friends and family. I'm starting to hear people kind of talking about, at times, getting a little crispy doing a podcast. Well, announce to your audience, because guess what? They're probably going to spend time with their friends and family, explain that, hey, you may not be doing an episode. I'm not a big fan of taking a break, but if you need a break, after all, take a break, announce to your friends and family, and they're not going to like punch you in the face because you want to spend time with grandma who's 96, right? So keep that in mind. Be kind to people. We should do that all the time, but especially now during the holidays. Another quick one here. I am, I just came back from a marketing conference and I kind of on off do a newsletter and I'm doubling down on this. And I'm saying this to you now because I'm building it dynamically. Now, what does that mean, Dave? It's going to have things like podcast news. I'm going to spotlight some of the members of the School of Podcasting with like a link. Uh, There's going to be links to my previous episodes, things that are catching my eye, behind the scenes information about the School of Podcasting. And you can sign up for this at schoolofpodcasting.com slash newsletter. And here's the fun part. If you say, hey, I just want to hear about the question of the month. That's the only thing that's going to be in your newsletter. Because when I go in, I build each of these topics and I can go in and say, hey, anybody that said, I want to know what caught Dave's eye. Show them this section about what caught Dave's eye. And for anybody who's wondering, I'm using Mailer Lite for this. I was on ConvertKit. ConvertKit is a great program. AWeber is a great program. I found for me Mailer Lite has it's a little bit like the Three Bear story. It's there are some that don't have enough features. There are some that have way too many features. This one for me is just right. And I want to say it's seventeen dollars a month. For that, I'm actually doing, I'm working on an episode right now. I've got a few people lined up to interview about how other podcasters are using email with their podcast. That came about uh, in just a bit. I'm going to be talking about Capshow, which is an AI tool that helps you write show notes. And one of their co-founders has an episode about how using email can really help boost your downloads. So I'm working on a narrative episode about that. And if you are using an email newsletter in your podcast, this is going to be one of those narrative style shows that I haven't done in a while. So I'm interviewing a ton of people and then I'm going to splice them all together. And if that is you, if you use a newsletter with your podcast, go out to schoolofpodcasting.com slash contact and you can be involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember if I told you this or not, but I have switched from Overcast.fm to Castomatic for my podcast listening, mainly because the creator of Overcast, who I really do admire, had said, hey, I'm never adding 
that whole streaming cryptocurrency to people. I'm never adding that to my app. And he recently announced he was taking away the web-based version, which I use to upload files that would then go into the app. Well, I found Castomatic, and not only does it have that whole upload a file and have it come down into the app, which is how I listen to my show before I publish it, eh, they also have the streaming cryptocurrency to your favorite podcasters, boostograms, things like that. And it looks and smells and almost tastes like Overcast. So if you want to stream Bitcoin to your favorite shows, check it out. You can find it at schoolofpodcasting.com slash new podcast apps with a few other ones because unfortunately Castomatic is only on iOS. And I guess now would be a good time to play this jingle. This is your friendly boost reminder. It's time to boost. 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 Cap Show is an AI. Now, if you're like, Dave, I don't want to admit this, but I don't. What does AI stand for? It's artificial intelligence. And you basically upload your file and it spits out a ton of stuff. And I'm going to tell you what happened when I tried it right after this. So I met Deidre at uh, Podcast Movement, I think it was. She's one of the co-founders of this particular piece of software. And she's super bubbly, super friendly. I She interviewed me for something a while back, and I've always had in the back of my mind, I need to check this out. Now, for the record, all right, and I'm going to talk about this in a bit, I get a little like, hmm, when it comes to AI. It's just one of those things, and I'll explain why my bias here. So in the for the record, I really didn't think I was going to like this. So... I went over, what is CapShow, Dave? Okay, so according to their website, it claims the best AI copywriting software for podcasters. Create your podcast promotional copy in under 10 minutes. And I was like, all right. So here's what happens is you upload your episode. Now I'm going to explain how I do this because I did that. And well, I'll explain. But here's what it can spit out. Your episode title and you know how I always say your episode title is so important. I don't clutter mine with the name of my show. Cause remember if they can see the title of the episode, the title of the show is right above it. You don't need to do that. And I'm not a big fan of putting episode numbers in my titles cause the episode title is so important. So it'll help you spit out a title. And if you don't like the first one, I think you get three tries to go, Hey, give me another one. Up, give me another one. Up, give me another one. And they're actually pretty good. Uh, episode description show notes, blog posts. And I was like, blog post. Yeah, right. Uh, promotional email, social media captions. So these are things you could kind of put on a uh, Instagram image or something like that. A LinkedIn article and a transcript. And so I was like, all right, I need to play with this. And I threw in an episode from Ask the Podcast Coach. Now, if you're not familiar with that show, it's a show I do every Saturday at askthepodcastcoach.com slash live. It's on at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time in the morning. It's me and Jim Cullison from TheAverageGuy.tv. And we just answer your questions. And it's always a lot of fun. And so consequently, as you might imagine, it's 90 minutes long. And we go all over the place because one person will ask a question about topic A, and then somebody else will ask about topic K. And then somebody else will go, what about L and M and W? And so it's all over the place, which is fine. It makes it kind of fun and entertaining. But consequently, when I uploaded this to Cap Show, it was kind of like, huh? Because it's trying to figure out how to come up with a title. And there's like, you know, 14 topics in this thing. And it's like, mm. so it was a little confused. And in the end, I would I would just say I was not impressed with that first attempt. It uh, there was one guy that jumped in named Uncle Marv, and it kept saying things about Uncle Marv that weren't true. And I was like, yeah, this is artificial intelligence, you know, sad trombone. So then I was like, wait a minute, you know, maybe I'm using it in a way that it's not supposed to be used because hopefully, you know, not everyone has kind of a magazine style. I mean, this show itself has multiple topics. We have this one that I'm talking about now, but I'm also going to tell you about the question of the month we have because of my podcast, right? It's, we have the main topic, but we also have these little other topics. So what I did is I went back to last week's episode and you can find that at schoolofpodcasting.com 
slash 852. And it was all about how important words are and how you can do things like instead of saying, are you interested in being a guest? If you ask them, are you willing to be a guest on my show? And so instead of giving it the whole episode, I just took that section about words and ran it through Cap Show. And I'm here to tell you again, I was like, yeah, this is going to probably suck. And uh, I pull it open. And with a more focused source file, I guess we could say, Cap Show caught my attention and it really surprised me. I was like, huh? And then I thought, well, okay, all right, that's because it gave me a few different episode uh, titles. And I was like, those are pretty good. I like those. I w- those would make me want to click. And that's really what you want your title to do. Let people know what it's about and more importantly, get them to click. But I was like, hold on, let's go to that, that blog thing. It's supposed to write me a blog post. And I looked at the blog post and scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. and was like, wait, hold on. How long is this thing? And the answer was it was over a thousand words. And what really caught me was I'm reading it. And it sounded like I wrote it because a large chunk of the words in the blog post had come out of my mouth. Again, it transcribed my file and then rewrote this blog post based on what I had said. So I was like, okay. And as it was generated, keep in mind though, as it came from a robot, it did require some editing. And I also wanted to add some links because it mentioned some things. I was like, oh, I had an episode about this. I could link back to that episode here and there. And that's how you get people to listen to old episodes. And I was like, ah, but this is the catch. I got to do some editing here. And so I purposely started my stopwatch on my phone. And the time it took to update that thousand word blog post, uh, seven minutes. And they claim, right, that you can get all this stuff for under 10. And I was like, huh. So again, I was like, that's pretty impressive because I really, the whole time I would read it. I'm like, yep, I would say that. Yep. I would say that there was one, like a couple sentences that I was like, yeah, that doesn't really tie into what I'm saying. So again, it's a robot, but it's not perfect. And we'll talk about in a second, is this for you or not? But the question is, is it worth it? Because the plans start Once you go through a free trial, they do offer a free trial that doesn't even need a credit card, which is kind of interesting. And the plans start at $29 a month for four episodes. And they go up. If you want the, I will write a blog post for you and do your laundry and everything else that it does, that is $90 a month. And so I I looked around. I've used Word Hero in the past. That will write over 60 different types of descriptions. So if you want a YouTube description and a blog post and a blah, it does all sorts of stuff. And that's $50 a month. They do have a, a lifetime deal going on right now. If you go out to schoolofpodcasting.com slash 853, I'll have links to all this stuff. And some of these have affiliate programs and full disclosure. AnyWord is another copywriting tool. That one's $30 a month. And of course, we've talked a lot about Descript. That will transcribe. And it also, that's the one where it makes it easy to edit your show because it transcribes your words, you know, or transcribes your your audio into words. When you edit the words, it edits the audio. That's kind of cool. And it has that amazing studio sound that I really love in Descript. Well, that's $30 a month. I've used Headliner Studio from CoSchedule, that's $9 a month. You basically have to buy a year in advance. So you're looking at 100 bucks for the year. And with CapShow, plans starting at $29 a month, I was like, you know, this saved me a fair amount of time. And hmm, now for $29 a month, you don't get the blog thing. That is $90 a month. And we'll talk about that in a second. So Dave, what are your thoughts? And I'll get to my final, final conclusion. But In this first like 10 minutes playing with the software, I was like, okay, you've earned my attention. I've decided to keep using it and see how it performs. But yeah, okay, here's the but. Remember, there are tools like Libsyn. Again, I work for Libsyn. We will take your audio and we will put it on YouTube with a static image. There are other places that do that like repurpose.io and it makes it easy for you to put an audio file on YouTube. And people have always said, well, should I do that? 
And I always say, well, what are you doing now? And they're like, well, nothing. I don't even have a YouTube channel. Well, then this is absolutely better than nothing. And so here with Cap Show, it creates some impressive work. And if you hate writing and you're looking for help on what to put on social media because, well, you're not doing any social media, this will help you do more than what you're doing, which, of course, is nothing. But I feel like saying, ah, it's better than nothing is kind of insulting the Cap Show service. Because I was impressed by the blog it spit out. I was impressed with the headlines it recommended. And so many people think that adding transcripts is the answer to show notes and descriptions. And I always say it's kind of the, the lazy person's description. Just putting transcripts, especially if you don't beat them into shape so that they're readable. Because we don't talk like we write. and We don't write like we talk. So transcripts always need help. Because remember, just putting transcripts on your website, Google doesn't just want words. Because so many people are like, ooh, transcripts, look, we had 4,000 words. Yeah, okay, but Google doesn't want just words. They want good words. It wants good content. And so many of the tools, like another really popular AI tool is called Jasper. I've used that. I quit using it because I wasn't just using it. And uh, the reason for that. In that case, they would come back with these paragraphs and blog posts that I would then have to go fact check. It would say like, four out of five dentists don't like dentine gum. And I was like, is that true? Wait, hold on. I better, before I post that under my brand. So there was that. Surfer SEO is another one I use that's pretty cool uh, in the past. I have switched that to something I got off AppSumo. I'll have links to all this stuff out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 853. But Jasper was like 100 bucks a month. Surfer SEO, I want to say, was like $80 a month. And I, when you're giving me a blog post that I have to fact check, I'm like, wait, you're, you're actually making me spend more time on my content now. So think about it this way. If you can write a thousand word blog post in less than seven minutes, well, then you don't need this. But you can try it for free and see what you think. And I want to dedicate this next part to my buddy, Neil Headley, over at The Voice in My Head. If you're not listening to that show, he talks. Here's a guy who's he's been in radio. He's been on TV. He's a guy that understands the media, but he also has a huge background in advertising and copywriting. And his head has exploded hearing these words come out of my mouth, talking about a robot copywriter. And I do want to definitely say, that artificial intelligence is never going to basically replace a human. And it, it can imitate a human. And for me, I don't think it can replace it. We're all different. We have these things called opinions. And we also have these things called personalities. And even though in some of these tools, I can specify a, a tone, like put this as serious or put this one as light or friendly or funny it almost always needs a tweak to match your personality. And so that's where I'm kind of like, yeah, these are fun tools. And if you're not doing anything, they're going to do some of the heavy lifting. But keep in mind that for me, I'm actually going to be taking Neil's course. I'll put a link to that out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 853. He has a copywriting course. I was on his website. He recommended a book that I'm listening to. Because to me, copywriting and any kind of sales skill is always beneficial because we're always selling. And copywriting, as much as it's about advertising, it's about communicating. And being a podcaster, I want to know how to communicate better. So who is Cap Show for? Well, if you're not writing anything or you're really struggling, again, this tool will do the heavy lifting. If you would love to have someone help you with your description and your titles, but you just can't afford a virtual assistant, but you might be able to find 29, again, all the way up to $90 a month in the monthly budget where a virtual assistant might be two to $300 a month, depending on where you're getting your virtual assistant from. Well, then this might be a good fit. You're, you're basically hiring a robot virtual assistant. Now, as always, if you're going to pay for any kind of service. You use one of two currencies. It's either time or money. And I always say, use the one you have the most of. So if you got a ton of time on your hands, well, then pay for it in time. 
and just write the blog post. But if you have more money than time, you're like, you know what? I'll spare 29 bucks so I don't have to spend 90 minutes on a blog post. I can get it done in about 10, maybe 20 minutes if I throw in my seven minutes. So it's something to check it out. And uh, I'll have a link to that. You can go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash cap show, C-A-P-S-H-O. And I'll have a link to all of this out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 853. I have applied. They do have an affiliate program. And uh, I may or may not have been approved by the time this airs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I feel like I'm playing point counterpoint. Because as much as I was like, wow, that AI was pretty impressive, I do want to, and this is kind of, I guess, an opinion piece. It's a little bit of a history lesson. Don't forget that robots, in my opinion, have hurt radio. So keep that in mind. Unless everybody think, oh, Dave's all in on AI. Eh." There are parts of me that resent artificial intelligence because it ruined the radio in my town. If you turn on the radio and you hear what amounts to basically Siri or the woman in the tube from Amazon that I don't want to say because it'll wake her up and they act like a DJ, right? They, they get done and they'll, you hear the end of a song and they go, Eddie money, two tickets to paradise before sending you into, I don't know, six to 10 minutes of advertising and robots, of course, cost a lot less than humans. They don't call off. They'll work any hours that you give them. And the radio industry chose to use them in pursuits of not profit, more profit. Radio executives have focused on quarterly profits instead of their audience. And if you look at any kind of graph from the recent years, radio listening is going down. Podcast listening is going up. Tom Webster penned some great posts. I mean, amazing posts. In fact, I was thinking of doing a similar type of episode because I really think if we don't understand the history of radio, we are doomed to repeat it. And I'll put a link to that out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 853, Tom Webster's article on the history of of radio and the mistakes they made. And we're kind of starting to make them here. So keep that in mind. So as we speak, as you listen to this right now, In some bunker somewhere, developers are writing code that's going to listen to your podcast and then basically based on the content of your episode, it's going to create some sort of like food label, you know, where you pick it up now and it says gluten free. Well, it might say, you know, cuss word free, Uh, might include, you know, tinfoil hat things, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it's going to give your episode a score. And I was like, okay, here we go. And that may inspire others, again, in pursuit of making money via ads, not everyone, but in pursuit of making money with ads to suck out all of the personality of their show, leaving basically what amounts to, and I'm going to date myself, an audio version of Up With People. Now, if you are not someone who I I was really surprised to see that they were doing things in the 90s. I remember as a young boy, probably around the age of seven, Up With People was a group of like 400 young kids from like whatever, 38 different countries. And they would be like the Super Bowl halftime. And as a young boy, I remember sitting in my grandfather's uh, living room on the floor because grandpa had a big color TV and ours wasn't that big. So we're watching the Super Bowl at grandpa's house and they came on and I remember thinking, ugh, not up with people. As a child, I was like, ugh, not these guys again, please no. And as I went to YouTube to see if I could find them, I was somewhat, uh, and I don't mean to make light of this, especially around Veterans Day, but I kind of like, Twerked a little bit, not twerk. That's not the right word. Tweaked, twitched, twitched. I twitched. There was a part of me that was like, yeah, up with people. No. So again, it's hundreds of young people donning sweaters and Cheshire cat smiles. And they were singing about giving it away. 
And I don't know what they were talking about giving it away. This was way before the, the chili peppers and the give it away, give it away thing. No. Up With People is an extraordinary educational and cultural program for young people all around the world. So without further ado, let's welcome 430 young people from 24 countries. Ladies and gentlemen, Up With People! And it was just, I, I would see them and go, oh my God, not Up With People. And so they're out there with their smiles and their sweaters and they're dancing. They're probably putting their hands in the air. And it always started off with them running. There was something like, hey, it's time for up with people. And they'd go to like an empty staircase and all these hundreds of kids going, yeah, we're positive. And yeah. So here's my whole point, Dave. Can you get to the point? Up with people was safe. They were very safe. You have to worry about anything. Because it's positive, it's uplifting, they're giving it away. We still don't know what it is, but they were giving it away and they were clapping about it and smiling. Oh, and one other thing. It was horrible. It was horrible. Trust me. And it was always like some old, fat, white executive trying to be cool. So you'd come up with this, uh, you know, kind of like, hey, let's try to do that rock and roll stuff that they're doing and make it funky. Yeah. Awful. Up with people was horrible. See, uh, can you hear the passion in my voice? Just the phrase up with people. There's a voice in my head that's going. "Ah!" So, all right. My goal here is to inspire you as you listen to me going, what is he talking about? Is this supposed to be about podcasting? Please don't make podcasting up with people. And I'm here to tell you right now that there are companies making tools that want to listen to your podcast so that if you want ads, you have to suck out all the personality, basically. I hope that's not true. That is my opinion. That much like radio, We quit looking at what our audience wants and we only focus on ads and how many we can stuff into an episode. I mentioned Neil Headley. He's a copywriter. He's an advertising media guy. I'll put a link out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 853. And you're probably going to hear me play this clip a couple of times, but here is something he mentioned about ads and why people hate ads in podcasting. Somewhere along the way, and I can't pinpoint exactly when, we stopped looking at advertising as content. Instead, it became a tool to promote other content. And that really got me thinking. And uh, as I record this, you'll hear about the November question of the month. Realize that the question of the month for December, I'm going to let you know what it is now so you can start thinking about it. That may be the show that I go to the minute it comes out. I always ask, what's your favorite podcast? The one that if you're on a you know desert island or whatever, what's your favorite podcast? And you can only choose one. So that will be coming in December. So start thinking about that. And right now, that's one of my favorites because it makes me think. One last thing, going back to Cap Show. If you go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash 853, I will have a video that shows you how this works because I realize it's software. It's kind of hard to listen about how to use the software. I'm going to take the segment that I just recorded, the one you just heard like four minutes ago. I'm going to run that through Cap Show and let it pick the title of the episode. So whatever the episode is you saw for this, that came from Cap Show. I will put a spot on the website, schoolofpodcasting.com slash 853, and I'll say, here's the part that Cap Show put together so you can see this in action. So personality is the key ingredient, I think, of podcasting. It's what makes you you. And in the immortal words of Jimi Hendrix, let your freak flag fly because those that love you will love you. And those that don't, ah, they just don't see your brilliance. It's the way I see it. And again, everything we mentioned today, you'll find at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 853. Don't forget about the holiday hours for Apple. Don't forget to go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash newsletter uh, to sign up for my dynamic newsletter that's coming. If you're a person that uses email in 
with your podcast. I would love to talk to you for my narrative style episode that's coming sometime in the future. That is one that I'm not in a hurry. I mean, I want to do that one right because I just I haven't done one of those in a while, a narrative style show. And that's where you basically ask people kind of the same questions and then splice them all together. So that's going to be fun. And I would love to hear from you if that's something that you are doing. And of course, don't forget school of podcasting.com slash listener is where you can sign up for the school of podcasting and join the other brilliant podcasting minds and get your show up and running and going in the right direction. Thanks so much for tuning in until next week. Take care. God bless class. Is this They were, yeah, hey, give it, and they and they all clapped on the one. They clapped on the one. This is now, we're going to, I'm going to probably get myself in trouble here, but I can say this because I'm a white guy. White people clap on the one. So it'd be like, podcasting, it's a thing, and we're singing, and we're happy, where other cultures clap on two and four. So podcasting, it's a fun, see, it has a little more of a thing. Yeah.